Welcome to Talk Mental Health with Logan Noon. This is episode 47, How Technology Impacts Mental Health. I'm going to be talking with my great friend, Mark Dunney. This is really one of, one of my closest friends. We're going to be talking about how we think mental health has had an impact on our life, both the benefits and the drawbacks. And then we take a kind of a look at the whole, how we think that television, video games, and really everything affects how we communicate, how we interact with one another, how it could potentially make us numb to violence, and how maybe it doesn't at all. So I really think you guys are going to like this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Mr. Dunny, welcome back. Ah, It's great to be back. Great to be speaking with you again. It's been all too long. This is now our take two on episode of Talk Mental Health with Logan Noon. You have been a previous guest. Um, I forget what guest. Look up Mark Dunny, I'll and I'll put it in the posting in the intro. But you've been on the podcast before, talking about mental health condition, mental health aspects of having a chronic heart issue. Yes, yes, heart issue all day. Um, and then so a couple today's episode, we're going to be talking about the impact of technology on mental health. Um, and of mm, course, and we're going to be here. Thirty-six, by the way, episode thirty-six. Just interrupt you. Oh, 36. Okay, yeah. good job. Okay. Anyways, go back to you. Um, and today we're going to be talking about technology, its impact on mental health, the bad and the good. Um, and me and Mark are great friends. He was best man at my wedding, so we're going to be veering off talking Ooh. about random things. Um, and Mark, the first thing I want to talk to you about mm. is um, newest thing in my life. I got a puppy. What? What? Yeah, dude. You just oh wow okay tell me more. I wanted to wait till we were on the <laughs> recording because I think that's awesome. Because I also strongly now believe in the impact of having pets on mental health. Oh really? Because Barthy and I have been Barthy for the records, my girlfriend. Uh, we've been discussing getting a dog for her and her studies because she's going through PhD school right now. So should we do it? I mean, look, I've only had this dog for two days. I'm not going to sit here and ask. Where like, is it? I'm, Let me see it. It's. Look, it, well, tell me more. Tell me more. All right. So I can't bring it in here, but it is a husky puppy, four months oh. old. Oh my god, dude, I it's the it. dream. I love um, it. You know, but we do have cats, so it's it's we're balancing that right now because yeah, the the dog doesn't seem vicious at all towards the cats or anything, but does want to play with the cats and chase after them. And right now, the the puppy's very um, teethy. Yeah. bitey in a sense not yeah. like hard biting but playful biting right. yeah 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 and we're like yeah let's uh we'll just take this slow um it has a ton of energy you know i run it around and it's still just just full of energy but uh it's like a husky and we think maybe like a lab mix cuz it's really really short hair husky i'll send Did you, you some pictures it? what yeah please do did you rescue it or so it? um it kind of just fell on our lap my wife's coworker ended up getting this dog and she has a bunch Uh of chihuahuas and the chihuahuas Uh were like really biting this husky and the husky didn't really care but they were afraid that all of a sudden the husky would be like all right i'm over this and just like kill the kill the uh chihuahuas so the kind of the dog they were just like hey do you guys want this dog we'll just give it to you and mig asked me and i was like yes we're i'm i'm down and and she was a little uneasy at first, but the dog's really been growing on us. It's just the cutest dog. It's it's like a pure white husky, like a albino husky in a sense. So like the Yukon husky. Yeah, kind of it, but it doesn't have that traditional kind of like black and gray sort of accent. Yeah. It's just all white. A little female What's its name? uh winter. Ah. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Winter that's exa- that's the first thing I said too. I was like, winter is coming. <laughs> It's like that same it looks like a wolf. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So it's um it's fun, man. And like this morning Can I you... woke up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Woke up, went on uh like a forty five minute three mile walk just at like seven in the morning. And would I ever do that if I didn't have a dog? No. <laughs> and speaking of technology, like I walked I walked around for mm-hmm. that, you know, forty five minutes or whatever. And I didn't have my cell phone with me. And so I was not listening to music or anything. And I can't remember the last time I went on that long of a walk without having some means of headphones and Mm. like almost like distraction. It's like, and it it felt weird at first, 
but it almost was more meditative towards the end because it was just like I was in silence, just kind of playing with the dog while we were walking around, um, mm-hmm. picking up its massive gargantuan shits. Um, but it was it was nice, and I was like, God, I I'm really enjoying it thus far. I know it's going to give me some headaches, but I'm enjoying it. So uh, let me ask you this though: if if you've gone on the walk and you didn't post it to Instagram, did you really go on the walk? True. True. But I am, uh, that brings us to the next topic. I mean, I... Hold on. I don't want to advance yet. I just have to ask you one more question about this dog. Uh, you said that your this dog definitely helps your mental health. And then you said the caveat, it's only been two days. But you jumped right into that comment. Why? Well, I mean, I look at it. I like going to the gym. However, mm-hmm. I certainly don't go as much as I should. Um, and it's always I have to motivate myself to go. Mm-hmm. Versus when you have a dog... You, you, it's not a decision. You you need to go, or that thing's gonna go crazy. Um, There's a great uh, comic that the Oatmeal just released uh, last week or two weeks ago. Do you know do you know the Oatmeal? No. All right, he does some like really funny comics. He created uh, uh, Exploding Kittens, the card game, and a couple other games as well. But it's called um, How I Walk My Human, and it's about how you take your dog for a walk, but it's really the dog taking you for a walk. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. No, I mean, and it's it's a, I, it's only been two days, but we've been dog sitting quite a bit this first half of the year, um, mm-hmm. and we keep talking about we should get a dog, we should get a dog, maybe not. And uh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm really really loving it. I'm jealous of you right now. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I want a dog. it's a big decision, you know. And but we like to me and Meg. Sounds like, like that was more of an impulse for you guys. Yeah, I know, but that's kind of how I am with everything. I feel like. Fair. Um. Fair. And, you know, Mig and I were kind of worried, like, oh, like, are we going to be able to handle this? And I was like, Mig, look, I'm 30 years old. You're 26. We're married. People our age a lot of time have a child, maybe a couple kids. People in yeah. medical school that I'm with have kids. Like, yeah. if they can handle it, we can I, handle we, a dog. Exactly. I agree. I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah. Not at all. That's awesome. I'm super happy for you. Yeah, man. So, so I'm psyched and like, you know, I'm already realizing even when we're just around the house, you know, previously I, I love my cats, of course, but they don't need as much attention. You know, when I'm sitting around the house, a lot of the time I'm maybe watching television. I'm maybe on my cell phone or or yeah. really in some means of technology with a mm-hmm. dog. You know, you're always what is that dog doing? What are you chewing on? What do you do? Like, you know, you're just so distracted with other mm-hmm. things. And, you know, I think we all spend too much time on our phones or some other means of technology, iPad, yep. you know, whatever. And yep. the the dog is just such a healthy distraction, I feel, thus far. Now, not to go too far down the dog rabbit hole, but are you concerned about, like, when you travel and having to find a place for it to stay and all, all that? Or you haven't even thought that far ahead? No, we certainly that's, have, that's and, and that's going to be a headache um yeah of course and uh we're gonna try to take it uh as much as we can but like this next weekend my sister lies is actually coming to visit us in portland so super excited for that but can't bring the dog for that so what we're kind of doing we have some friends in town um Mm -hmm. they're gone this weekend so i'm watching their dog this weekend and Mm -hmm. we're just gonna kind of do the trade-off like all right well can you guys help us out um next week and so it's it's certainly going to be hard i'm sure we'll have to kennel it at some point or another too um yeah. but you know it's just it's a fun new responsibility i like it I'm, I'm happy for you yeah yeah so uh my transitioning comment was if you uh went on this walk but didn't instagram it how do we know it's true well i'm a i'm a hater of instagram you are I mean, I I feel I spend too much time on it. I shouldn't say that. I'm lying. I do like <laughs> Instagram. I I feel you know instead of watching ESPN these days, half of the time I watch Instagram and I watch golf highlights, skiing mm-hmm. highlights, basketball, mm-hmm. cars. You know all the things that we like, but it's mm-hmm. just a time suck, and yeah, it it's it it makes me, you know it it. I feel Instagram and other things similar. It, it just fuels that kind of consumer desire. Like you see things that you're, oh, I want that. I want that. Rather yeah. than just appreciating the things that you actually have. So along those lines going like in terms of like desiring, right? So I, I'm not a fast runner. I'm just slowly getting, I'm just starting to get into running. 
And today I went for a run with Barthy and I like timed it and all of that. And at the end of it, I was like, I looked at my watch and I'm like, man, like I didn't have a good pace. I'm upset with myself. But if I really think and step back for a second, I don't run often. And the fact that I just ran five miles without stopping is a big deal to me. And well, I, I remember upset. in high school, you said you couldn't even do certain sports that involved prolonged running. Yeah. So it's just, it's funny because I'm upset with myself because I didn't reach a, certain, reach a certain pace, but here I am doing something. And it's because I'm using this technology to monitor myself and compare myself to something. Do you uh, use I, Strava? I do use Strava. Yeah. Yeah. So Strava... but it's, just, it's just funny though, because it's like, here I am comparing myself to others when I'm doing something that I've never done before and I'm upset by it, but I went out and did it. So yeah. to your I point mean, about I, Instagram, I, I it's definitely... like that's what I'm trying to bring that parallel back. It's, it's like you like go on Instagram, you're scrolling through it and you're like, oh, wow, I wish I had this clothing item or I wish I had this body type. Yeah. I suck. Yeah. And, you know, I, I definitely have felt that too. Like I've gotten into bicycling and I've been using that for the listener. Strava is an app that um, I think it's really fun. Mm-hmm. And it, it's for running, it's for biking. Wait, you're on it? I'm going to yeah. add you right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's all, I think there's probably other sports like swimming and stuff. And it's almost like yeah. a Facebook, of, I guess, of working out in a sense. You can kind of see where your friends, how much they are working out. You can see what kind of workouts they're doing. And you can even compete with people you don't know. It's very, very cool. But I think out know, of all the uh, apps out there, it's probably the best one because it's health focused. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it is it is very, very good. You can even, I think, pay the premium and find like routes and stuff, kind of cool things in your area. But, you know, me, I'm riding on a bicycle that's from like 1985. It's a it's an old bicycle. It gets the job done, but it's it's made out of steel. It's not like an aluminum frame. It's not a mm-hmm. carbon fire. It's very heavy. Um, mm-hmm. It's not in the best condition. My brakes are a little little dicey. Um but so I go on those apps and I look at my bicycling stats mm-hmm. and I am going significantly slower. And of course, I'm a very novice bicyclist, significantly yeah. slower than these other people that maybe have better equipment. Of course, they're in better bicycling shape than me. And mm-hmm. sometimes I do almost get down on myself and it's I got to mm-hmm. take it back like, oh, you know, I used You're to be significantly out. fatter. Yeah. And it's like yeah. I used to not even bike. Exactly. Yeah, I had that feeling. I just added you, by the way. Very good. Very good. And so any of the the listeners, I guess, if you are on Strava, you should add myself, Logan Noon, and Mark Denny. Um, And because we can now all have a, hey, we're not that healthy, but we're trying to move in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. What what is my Strava name? Is it just my full name? Yeah, it is just Mark Denny. Okay, cool. And Denny is spelled with an E at the end, kind of like Noon is spelled at the the end. Yes. Add us. But so, so I guess, you know, I just came off my pediatric rotation and yeah. one of the, I guess. Are you two I, weeks in now? What? Are, we, are you a week or two weeks in now? Oh, you no, started I, a new one. You started a new one though. Yeah. I finished yeah, my right. pediatrics was six weeks long. My, okay. um, I'm in adult medicine right now, like family med. Um, yep. and just finished one week. It's, it's really nice. And there are really stark differences that I'm noticing Tell because me more. especially with the peds, mm-hmm. I'm I really think technology is just causing so many problems. Okay. And it's, I think one of the most basic things is a lot of these kids, and I say literally all age kids, aren't as good at communicating as me and you were at that age. How do you know that for a fact, though? Well, I mean, I guess I don't see them interacting with their peers, so it's hard for me to say. But interacting with adults, interacting with parents, and of course, doctors and medical students. You know, when me and you were brought to the doctor's office, and you were in Mm -hmm. the doctor's office a ton, of course, as a kid, you had to entertain yourself with a book, with imagination play, with, and of course, talking. These kids, when they're upset, hey, mom puts a phone in front of them. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I've literally had to got to the point where I had to almost discipline the kids like, hey, look, I'm trying to, you know, help out your health right now. You need to put the phone away because they would be talking with me while checking their phone. And it was just it, these really? kids. Yeah, these kids seemed inept to have normal conversations, speaking conversations. I'm sure they're much more proficient texters than you and me. And also, you know. It even almost brings down to like an eye contact thing because Mm -hmm. they don't have those same kind of face-to-face interactions that maybe me and you had 
Um, mm-hmm. And they just, it's like, I almost thought every kid was autistic in, in some respect because they're not as good at making eye contact as I anticipated. Hmm. So when you're meeting with these kids and they're on their phone, is it like a sense of, this is you talking to them, you're in the meeting talking to them about their health or whatever it is, and they still have to be on their phone while being in the room with you. They're just on the phone at all times. Even walking essentially into the room. You know, they a lot of them would have their phones in the pocket. A lot of them would still have their headphones in. A lot of them, you know, just Snapchatting, just Instagramming, just always on. It's like, you know, they, I felt these, and of course even adults as well, um, they don't know how to deal with boredom. It's like at mm-hmm. every second, every second they have to be doing something. It's like, dude, yeah. chill. You can just sit yeah. there. And I just, it, it really, really concerns me. But do you feel that we as adults, like you and I, maybe we can use ourselves as examples, can deal with boredom well? I mean, what do you do when you're bored? You were just commenting on how you were sitting and you would be on your phone looking at Instagram previously, and now you have a dog to keep you occupied. So what makes it different? Well, let me at least then put it this way. I, I I certainly think a lot of adults do that. But when I would go into the room and speak now mm-hmm. with my adults, and of course, I've only been doing this a week. I don't want to act like I'm an expert. Yeah. But adults, and of course, the majority of patients that are going to see family doctors are maybe in their 50s or 60s. They haven't grown up with cell phones, you know. Right. They put the cell phone down. They can have a conversation. They look at me yeah. in the eye kind of thing. And, you know, the, a lot of them, of course, would have the cell phone when uh, they're sitting in there by themselves. You know, fam- yep. doctors run behind all the time. We make people wait. It, it's just the nature of healthcare at this point. But when I would go in the room, it did feel totally different. Like they would put the phone down. They understand that level of respect. And, yeah. you know, I, I get it's an there. age thing as well, but it's just much better communication skills, much better uh, eye contact. Mm-hmm. And... It, 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 I don't know. I'm just super worried and I'm almost intrigued of going into pediatric psych and, and learning more about how technology is not helping and not helping as much as we think. So I read the article you sent me about uh, the congressman. I don't forgot what state he's in, but he has that bill, the SMART Act. And I'm intrigued by the concept. But so why I, don't you quickly, though, explain what and you don't have to. This isn't yeah. perfect, but explain what that article said and what the SMART Act was. Sure. So my understanding of it is at a high level, uh, this gentleman, um, let me find out his name before I keep going down this path. Uh, but long story short, as I'm looking it up, he uh, wants to limit how long you are able to access social media by default. So the default setting would be you get 30 minutes a day, I believe it was. Um, to use social media, or is it thirty minutes a month? Hold on, I, mean, I think you... it was a day. I, was a I day, don't yeah. believe it was a month. Yeah, yeah, it's thirty minutes a day, and his name is Josh Hawley. I'm definitely butchering that. He is a Republican in Montana, and essentially, the Smart Act would be you have a limitation of how long you could, yeah thirty minutes a day, and it's a, you could change the time limit yourself, but by default, social media platforms had to require that. And then in addition to that, there had to be settings where there'd be an ending point. So there's no infinite scrolling and there wouldn't be any um, any kind of like gamification in terms of trying to intrigue or entice you, sorry, to, to use the app more. Mm-hmm. So any of those types of casino type uh, methodologies that app developers are using to keep you addicted to their apps, they kind of have to remove those. So you can change it, which is cool. And the concept's interesting. My only thing as I was reading it that held me back on the idea was there are times and places where social media is used for good and people have found communities that have helped them cope with things. Mm -hmm. I don't know how often that is or how regular that is, but that does exist. And maybe those are the people that need to change it for more than 30 minutes a day compared to someone like you or I where all we do need is 30 minutes a day. Um, So I just thought that was really interesting. And I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, for myself, I stepped back and stopped using Twitter and Snapchat at the start of the new year, and I deleted them from my phones for six months, and I put them back on in the past like month or two, and I don't check them as much anymore. Like I, mm-hmm. now, because of that whole like six month purge, I go. I'm conscious of it. I check it far less. 
I use it here and there, but I don't use it to fill my boredom anymore. I, yeah. I, 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 the problem though is I think I now use Reddit to fill my boredom, but I feel like that's yeah. better. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think there's two sides to that argument, but I guess talking about the bill first, I think yeah. the bill's intent is great, and I am on board with finding yeah. ways to because it I, it is an addiction. I think it's an yeah. addiction the same way as uh, video games, as pornography, as you know, we could even go, I guess, as far as a uh, drug, you know, in a sense, because it is releasing that dopamine, that reward system. Yep. But I don't see it in practice being effective. I think everyone would, not everyone, a lot of people would just change their settings right away. Or yep. if it ever was a restricted settings kind of thing where it kind of was really a pain in the butt, I think people would just almost create different usernames if they wanted to to spend more time on those apps. So... I don't mm -hmm. necessarily know how effective it would be, but I, I, I respect the intent. And I, I, go ahead, I was going to say, it, it resets every 30 days to be back to 30 minutes if you change it, the setting, just so you're aware. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I would love social media mm -hmm. if its intent wasn't necessarily to keep you on the, all right, cat, chill out wasn't necessarily to keep you on the uh app and have you of course you know they want to make money by selling ad space i get it yep. but yep. i wish that there was ways that they actually tried to bring people in the same place like have you ever used a uh, meetup.com yeah i have i think that's and i wish that that service was in a sense better or more highly used because yeah. i think it's somewhat used but i don't understand why facebook and instagram doesn't have more of those kind of functions for instance i'm a mm -hmm. huge golfer and now mm -hmm. i'm i'm starting to learn more and more about cars i'm really enjoying working on my bmw i see cars around town I actually this morning i saw uh my exact same bmw but an m3 uh edition and it just was so immaculately cared for I wish that there was ways that there was just meetups, essentially, once or twice a week that you could connect with via Instagram on your on your interests. Yeah, just much they easier. And I know those things do exist, but they they're not as effective as I think right now. And right now, maybe we look at hashtag BMW and we like each other's photos. But yeah, I think that needs to be. Get, get people out of their house, get people out of their mm -hmm. comfort zone, actually talking with another and meeting up and making new social connections. Because I mm -hmm. think that's really the the solution to a lot of mental health issues. It's just curbing isolation and curbing mm -hmm. sitting on your ass all day. It's like getting mm -hmm. out, trying to talk with people. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree. It's funny you bring that up because I've been thinking about that as well uh, in terms of wanting a platform um, that makes it easier to just have conversations not even about like interests like cars and stuff, but just about your mental health. Like, I don't know. I want to go to a place where I can go to a community of people and just discuss things that are on my mind that maybe I can't discuss with people close to me right now, but I would feel more comfortable almost talking about it with a stranger. Mm -hmm. it, I know it's kind of weird, but that makes, I know that makes sense. Well, those, and, those support groups actually do exist. And that meetup.com, why I love it was that yep. was the first group I met that uh, was a bipolar and depression support group. Okay. And so those groups do exist, and I think they exist, of course, much more in urban settings. I'm sure in Boston there's a million of them. But mm -hmm. I think you bring up an interesting point that I hear people all the time say this, and it drives me nuts. Um, oh, I feel I can't talk about mental health because I don't have a mental health diagnosis. Really? Well, it's like, for instance... Would you feel comfortable going to a bipolar and depression support group, even though you have, to my knowledge, even though you have not been diagnosed with uh, bipolar or depression disorder or anxiety disorder, something like that? Like, because you don't have that label given to you by a doctor or a therapist, you don't mm -hmm. feel that you would be as accepted at those groups as as someone without that. Uh, I have not been diagnosed with any of those things. Um I don't know. I really don't know. I think I, I'd like to think that I would be comfortable going to those types of places because I like communities in that way. Um, but I'm not sure. I definitely think it would be a barrier for entry, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But I think that's going back to kind of what I was saying and, and longing for and looking for. 
is a, a place where I could do that without labels being applied. Yeah. And less so about the label and more so about a community where you could just go and just have a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I know they exist. I guess it's just more finding them because it's everything's so fragmented. Like you were, because you have Meetup, you have Facebook uh, Meetup groups, you have uh, Instagram Meetup groups. Maybe I don't know. I'm making that up, but like, mm -hmm. they do exist. I guess to my just, knowledge, I don't know that Instagram has Meetup groups. No, they don't. Well, maybe they do. I think people create them. Yeah, in their own way. But like, it, like it would make sense if, if you know, for someone like you who maybe really likes technology. Yeah, and I feel Instagram should pop up like, oh, okay, Mark, there is a thousand people in your general area that all seem to like Apple as much as you do, whatever. Um, there's going to be an, a technology hangout at this coffee shop from six to nine, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good example. Well, uh, I guess we're going to have to build it, Logan. I guess so. Yeah, we'll make a Tinder for meetups. Yeah. And hey, it yeah. might even lead to Tinder things it's yeah for people, thing. which is yeah. good you know it's like you go to a social setting. Of a common interest yeah yeah you go to a social setting not with in the with the intent of finding a lover but maybe it will be a, a nice um follow-up because it's it seems like there's you know the meetup and then there's of course tinder and tinder does serve its purpose really well in some regards um mm -hmm. i think you met your your wife off a similar or not wife girlfriend off a similar <laughs> service right yeah, Bumble. Yeah, it, it serves a great purpose, but I almost wish that there was like a friend Tinder, and I think there probably is, but I there don't. Is. I don't. People well, don't so use it. Bumble None has, of my friends use it. Bumble has that now. Oh, okay. That. Yeah, uh, yeah. They offer like a friend feature. Okay. But that's interesting, nonetheless. I mean, I don't have the app anymore. I, yeah, I because I mean, one thing that I've seen in clinic is just. Not as much with kids because the kids were they're at school they're around other people all the time but especially with the adults like isolation is just one of that seems like the biggest problems it's like what do you do all day well I'm at home all day I don't really do much I watch the television I you know go outside and smoke my cigarettes you know it's just kind of very very fragmented to people even though we all live right around each other mm hmm yeah I think community is important. Um... It's, I think it's really important, for sure. So, and hang out with people. Going back now to something you said earlier, I kind of took a hiatus from social sure. media and even podcasting, I guess, as well, during my yeah. board prep time. Mm -hmm. And I did really miss podcasting. I, I this is one of my favorite things that I've I've started to do. But mm -hmm. I didn't really miss Instagram. I didn't really miss Facebook. You know, and it, yeah. it was a little awkward at first. But I I. I just, I don't know. I felt like happier. I felt like I was meditating more. I was just kind of focused on my studies more. Um, and it, it really helped me. I almost wish I started doing it sooner. And now I feel, you know, as a podcast, I'm trying to get this podcast to grow. Mm -hmm. I feel I need to use these platforms yep. to help me reach other people, to help me get yep. more guests and yep. more listeners, of course, at the end of yep. the day. And I hate it. I yep. just, I don't, I feel like I always, it's like a chore. I have to push myself mm -hmm. to do it. I don't mm -hmm. feel like I'm a good Instagrammer in a sense. You know, I don't want to be, or I don't enjoy, you know, sharing every aspect of my life of every moment of the day. And writing like a long inspirational speech in your post. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if someone wants to listen to some inspiration, log on to my podcast. Like it, yeah. I, I can only do so much, you know, I'm trying yeah. my best here. And like, I just... You know, putting on all these filters and adding all the hashtags and posting it here, posting it there, posting it there. It's just, it is it's exhausting. Yeah. I mean, how how does it get done then? Like, and I'm, I'm asking because I don't know. Like, how do you grow a following without being on these platforms? It's the only way is word of mouth, but word of mouth can only take you so far to grow organically. I mean, I, I also think, though, the word of mouth though it more people are more likely to actually listen i think yeah. versus if it's shown up oh you may like this podcast kind of thing so i mean i just kind of look at it i'd rather have a slow steady growth of my podcast of people who truly do find it valuable and enjoy it versus you know a lot of people have told me oh you should maybe make an investment in 
Facebook advertisements or Instagram advertisements and all this stuff. And it's just, you know, one, I don't have any money. I'm a med student. I'm dead broke. But I just, it's not something I'm I'm interested in. I want people to stumble on my podcast, and if they like it, they like it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be number one on the charts. I just want to help people. I don't really care, kind of. Yeah. Thing. Well, you help people definitely by having your audience listen to you now, but by getting it to more people, you'll help even more people. Yeah. That being said, I mean, one thing you could do is you could look at resources like Fiverr. Are you familiar with it? Fiverr? Yeah, Fiverr. Oh, Fiverr. Okay. F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Uh, I mean, I'm Fiverr not really familiar, no. Okay, so Fiverr is essentially a resource where there's a community of people um, who will do services for you for as little as, as five dollars, like creative services. So you could essentially go into Fiverr and find someone who will create a, a two months worth of social media posts for you, for you to follow, and then you just do it based on what they say. Hmm. So you could you could outsource your things that you don't enjoy doing to these platforms uh, to help yourself out to grow your audience. Um, that's just an idea for you. Yeah. Well, and uh, it's it's one of those things I do. I mean, I shouldn't say I don't enjoy Instagram. Of course I do. And there's and, and I like posting sometimes when I have my golf. Uh, when I'm out on the golf course, I seem to always yeah. take a photo. When I, you know, I'm really working on this BMW, trying to restore it. I know I'm going to start posting more uh, photos mm -hmm. of that BMW. It's just the kind of thing it, when you read these articles, like how to use social media to essentially as a business it's yeah. like you should be posting every day you should be posting multiple times a day you should be posting on multiple platforms it really just it takes all the fun out of it and it doesn't yeah. it it's not enjoyable i mean if i were you in the situation uh which you are in i would pick one platform that you enjoy and just stick with that um and that's just the place where you communicate through yeah so if it's instagram it's instagram if it's twitter it's twitter in addition to obviously podcasting yeah I mean, I think I think it, it will be Instagram. Quick little break in this episode. I want to remind you all that the best way to support this podcast is to go on Amazon and check out the book me and my great friend Richard Arreo made called Imperfect Balance. It's a collection of stories, really 10 of our favorite stories of medical students living with mental health challenges. I think this book really is, uh, of course, for medical students, but really anyone who's in any kind of academic setting dealing with uh, mental health. For instance, uh, I have some family members who live with ADHD, and they're only in like eighth grade or so, but uh, they are finding this book valuable, and I think you can too. So once again, that's on Amazon, Imperfect Balance. You can find the link also on my Instagram and Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. You know, so one thing though that I also kind of noticed, you know, now that I'm back on um the platforms and you know i'm trying to use them in a healthy way not too much taking that yeah. hiatus allowed me to kind of have a better balance because there would be yeah. times that i would use my instagram yep as my distraction from studying and yep. just kind of like a break and i'd be like oh i'm just gonna look at it for five minutes and that would turn yeah. into you know 10 or 20 yeah. um and it wasn't healthy but now no. taking that break away it's like now i i don't find myself needing to look at it as long as I used to. And I feel it is I'm better able to find a much better balance in my life. And then kind of the other almost very surprising thing that I found is I think everyone should spend less time looking at a screen, right? You know, getting yeah. outside, maybe reading, Green. exercising, whatever it may be. I think that's all good for our mental health. Yeah. My wife for my 30th birthday bought me an Apple Watch. Mm. Um, because I wanted the golf course that I'm, uh, I play most frequently doesn't really have good yardage markers. And okay. I was like, well, I want a golf watch so I can tell how far out I, I am. And she just got me an Apple watch and I, and it's, it does the trick. And of course a million yeah. other things. And I yeah. absolutely love it. And what I didn't anticipate though, is having the Apple watch has actually led me to look at my phone much, much less. Yeah. It That's is, you cool. know, I'll just look at the watch. I'll look at the timer or whatever real quick. If someone texts me, of course, I can read it and I can, yeah. you know, almost voice command it to send something back if it is urgent. Yeah. But it's there's almost times and even almost the whole day where I can go without really ever looking at my phone just because I'll look at the watch here and there. And yeah. I spend much less time looking at the watch than I ever did on the cell phone. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, that's the thing about I love about the Apple Watch um, is that it allows that. And I also like the the fitness pieces of it. I don't have one right now, but because I'm on Android. Mm-hmm. But um, when I was using iPhone, I really enjoyed also the rings and trying to close them every day, like on the on the fitness mm-hmm. aspect. But I want to go back to social media really quick because one thing that I have found very useful for social media in my life now that I'm using these platforms again is the the wellness features that both Apple and Google offer where you set the limit for how long you want to be able to use the apps. Are, are you familiar with that? Uh, no, <laughs> to be okay. honest. I get so, those updates where it's like the the screen reports like once a week yeah. it sends you and it's yep. just like, oh, like that is that is so yeah. unhealthy. <laughs> So on uh, both iOS and on Android, in um, iOS 12 and in Android, I believe it's um, 9, iOS version 9 of their OS system, um, Apple calls it uh, wellness, I think, and Android calls it digital well-being, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can set app limits. So you can say, I only want to use Instagram for 30 minutes a day. I only want to use Twitter for 20 minutes a day, so on and so forth. And you can set it permission app by app. And then after the time frame comes where you're about to um, hit the limit on iOS, it'll say uh, you're about to hit your or you've reached your limit. Do you want to extend it or do you want to end it for the day? On Android, it's actually, I think, a little bit better. It just shuts you out of the app. You just can't use it until you change how long you use the app. But those are ways to practice mindfulness about how long you're using these applications and to also be more aware, aware of um, limiting how much you use them and their default features now in both of these operating systems. Mm -hmm. So it's a really great way to limit and put a constraint on it yourself. So for me, I have it set that I can only use Instagram for 30 minutes a day. I can use Twitter for 30 minutes a day. I can only use YouTube for like an hour. I know it's a lot, but I never ever reach that anyways. Um, So I have these limits set up and then very rarely do I ever hit the peak of where I've used it for that much time during the day. But when I do, I'm like, Oh damn, I've been using this a lot today. I've been distracted. So those are really great resources that are now built into these operating systems that can help people combat it themselves without needing this bill that the center is pushing out. And it's really useful and really helpful, and I highly recommend it. Yeah. And I think, you know, mandating that you can only use Instagram this amount is just going to incentivize people, I feel like, to find ways around it and use it more. Yep. But if, if I, I really I didn't actually know so much about those app limits kind of things, um, yeah. if we if the public kind of understands like why that's a good idea, I think that's mm-hmm. excellent. And, and I'm I'm sure it exists. But I also think about, you know, I know like my fitness pal, you can put in your food and stuff. To be honest, I don't really do it all that much. But yeah. I, I would love to just almost have that be more common practice where the phone or the uh, the watch or whatever, you know, say a person is drinking and yep. it's like, hey, like you've had four beers and we can tell that you drove here kind of thing. Before yeah. you get back in your vehicle, you should maybe wait two hours or so, whatever it may be kind of yeah. thing. I feel like those would be mm-hmm. kind of cool features that would really benefit someone's mental health and, of course, safety. I mean, thank goodness for Uber and Lyft for that reason, for yeah. drinking and driving. Um, but that will happen. I... I I don't know when it will happen, but it will happen. I, most likely, something like that will happen when augmented reality becomes uh, more common. The only thing is, then there's a whole comment comment about and thinking not comment, but like, then you have to start thinking to yourself, okay, uh, what about invasion of privacy? So if I have this augmented reality system that could, you know, monitor what I'm doing, that means there's a camera always on looking at the things I'm doing. Do mm-hmm. I really want that? And then that goes into a whole other conversation about privacy. And about now these companies know this data about you. Like, oh, you drink four beers on Saturday and then you drive home. Eh. And yeah. then, you know, and we also now can track your driving. We know how well you drive. Like all these little things. So then it comes down to the privacy conversation of how much do I really want these companies to know about me? Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other Well, and you bring up, you know, that me. augmented reality thing. This one thing that intri- intrigues me as a I'm pursuing psychiatry, right? Yep. Um, to treat PTSD, there's now talks about using like virtual reality mm, and kind that. of like, you know, to yep. almost essentially expose that person to, uh, you know, that traumatic event, or yep. let's say someone has a very strong phobia to flying. Mm. Like that's kind mm. of an easy example using yeah. virtual reality to kind of like get that person used to that kind of setting or, you mm-hmm. know, PTSD kind of that 
as a means of treatment. I, of course, don't know a lot about it. I'm kind of talking out of my ass right now. But the, I've seen articles and I've seen posts about this. And I think it's it's really, really interesting. And I would love mm-hmm. to see that as a way of technology kind of improving people's mental health. So along those lines, I have an Oculus Quest. That's the um, heads, it's more recent um, product that came out. And it's like essentially a VR system that's like self-contained. And it is so much fun. Uh, and I could 1 million percent see how this could, sorry, I hit my mic. Uh, I could see 1 million percent how this could uh, be useful in the scenarios you're describing. Granted, all the applications that are out on these platforms are more for entertainment and yeah. less so for, for health. Um, but, and soon to be porn. Uh, yes. Definitely. Sure probably, yes. Uh, I uh, I think it's really promising, and I think there's going to be a lot of good that can come from it. And it's just, um, it's a really cool cool time. It's really cool. I mean, yeah, it, it there's a lot of good that can come from it, and then I'm also incredibly terrified. Because if people yeah. are not going outside right now because they're playing a lot of video games, they're on Netflix all the time. Yep. I'm very concerned that in this state of virtual reality, dude, that... I break a sweat playing these games. I am 100 percent serious. Okay, um, I, I'm I... like I'm like dodging bullets, yeah. air quotes. I am like running around. Like I, I'm working on the size of a like the size of a like I map. So you map like a virtual place where you work in, like where you stay in, mm-hmm. and I map it around my carpet so I can like feel where I am. And if I go touch the hardwood floor, I know I'm out of bounds. No, I, I literally break a sweat playing it. And I'm, I like, don't really and dodging. I don't deny that. I, I think for cool. exercise purposes, it could be fantastic and a very cool way to get people moving. My it's biggest so cool. concern, though, is when people start preferring the virtual reality world over the mm-hmm. world we live in. Mm, and that's so at every point of the day, you feel like a piece of crap until, until you, you can. It, it's almost like a drug until you go home and you get on that VR and it's like, oh, thank God I live in space. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever the yeah. VR kind of thing is. And yeah. It just really, really concerns me there. You know, we, yeah. we talk a lot of times, especially in the pediatric uh, kind of world when I was in it, uh, video game addiction. And it's like, what kind of addiction is the VR video games and all this stuff, VR movies, going to gonna start? Hold on a second. I'm going to sneeze. Uh, Do it. Do it. Oh, we're good. <laughs> Woo! Sorry. You can kick, cut that out. Um, sorry, say that again about the VR. I was distracted by I'm, my. Speed. I guess I'm just concerned that people are going to prefer it over the real world. And you know, there on the podcast, I think it was like episode six or something. Um, we talked about attention restoration theory and how just simply mm-hmm. going outside and being mm-hmm. in nature is a great way to benefit your, your mental health, health yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. I'm concerned that you know if people are enjoying these VR kind of systems. And I imagine mm-hmm. they will. I'm sure I'm going to be using it. I'm, I know I'll enjoy it. But people are going to be even less de-incentivized to get outside and go do stuff. Uh, probably true. Hopefully, when you're leaving the VR world, you're going to want some sunlight, but most likely not. Yeah, I, I definitely don't see that going in the right way. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I mean, it just it really, really concerns me. It's like... I'm sure it's going to be fun, but I I feel as a future psychiatrist that uh, it's going to allow me to have more patience in a sense because these individuals potentially could be just isolated in their old world in their own VR the whole time. Do you think you'll have to talk to them in VR? Maybe. I mean, I, I a big part of this podcast is I want to eventually I want to continue this podcast and I want to turn into a telemedicine psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. Um, and so maybe instead of video chatting, like we are now, we'll be VR chatting and, um, maybe that will allow for a better patient, um, physician interaction, you know, rather than seeing ourselves through through just a computer screen, like 11 by whatever, 14, whatever it may is. Um, you can actually kind of see the entire person's body in front of you. It almost stimulates like it's, we're in the same room Mm -hmm. because my big thing with, especially it's really all patients but especially psychiatry patients they don't come in they miss appointments all the time you know when i worked at the addiction center one of my biggest concerns we wouldn't see a patient come in it's like you would essentially assume oh they relapsed they're probably using 
and it, it was very scary and disturbing to me and I would get really worried. And so my thought of, of course, with telemedicine and Skype medicine, whatever you want to call it, that if that patient is, let's just say out on the streets or in, you know, a trap house going to use, even if they have that needle in their arm, it's like, dude, pick up the phone, put that VR headset on maybe and let's yeah. at least have a conversation. I'm not mad at you. Let's just talk about yeah. it. Let's just make sure you're safe. You know, why did you want to use today? What what went on kind of thing? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be good for people and bad for people, like everything in this world. Mm -hmm. And I think there's going to be some benefits that come from it. And then there's going to be some issues that arise from it as well. And I think um, what was interesting in the article you sent me again, going back to that, was they, they talked about how this whole idea of social media being an issue and causing, you know, addiction and, and possibly like making people whatever you want to say, um, it's not fully proven yet and they needed to do more research. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, at least in this article, that the um, it's premature to just go down this route and start banning social media before we know too much about it yeah it's not totally proven so i don't know I, i'm not too sure where i'm going with that but it's just something to think about yeah well i know video game addiction now just got added to the dsm-5 um, did. so it is official diagnosis they even have like video game treatment centers which i've never worked in um but i think is pretty cool um yeah. well so I mean, now you can make money being a gamer that's pretty cool. I know. I mean, that kid made what three million bucks. I mean, it's just. It's, yeah. I'm not surprised. I saw an interesting stat the other day. Yesterday, actually, it was. Um, it was on. Do you know what is it called? Patriot Games. That guy on Netflix, like the Indian guy. Don't know. He's like a comedian. Well, you, okay. I'll I'll have to look it up. But, um, okay. he was talking about video games and how workers, the employees of video games, you know, are treated really poorly. But one mm -hmm. thing he was talking a lot about is that, uh, you know, Twitch, which is like the YouTube yep. of video games and people can yep. like watch other yep. gamers play. Um, yep. So what he was saying is like that big tournament where that player made all the money. Oh, the Patriot Act. The guy, um, it's on Netflix with Hassan okay. uh, Minha. I'm butchering that name and I'm, I'm sorry. But uh, the Patriot Act, check it out. And you can even get it on YouTube. It's called The Dark Side of Video Games. Okay. And what he was talking about is he was showing like those video game tournaments yep. that uh, people can watch, you know, where the guy won three yeah. million dollars on Fortnite that yeah. literally had like 50 percent more viewers than yep. game six of the NBA finals. Yeah, no, it's a huge it's, thing. I was like, what? It was more yeah. than it was more than like uh, game six of the NBA finals and one of the NFL playoff games combined. It's huge. And it's I huge. just I I didn't realize I knew it was big, but I guess sometimes yeah. I'm a little bit dumb to how big it is. Like I'm kind of a gamer, but I play golf video games. I mean, I'm that kind of dork. So okay, this actually is a good segment. This and I think we have like ten more minutes with you or so before you gotta go. On the previous episode, I know you haven't listened to it yet, but we were talking about mass shootings, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and one of, you so know, uh, uh, politicians especially, but really everybody, why does this happen? Why does this happen? And I think it's yep. a culmination of many different things, right? right? Um, but one of the common scapegoats that we hear is video games is the cause yep. of mass shootings. Yep. So what yep. is your opinion on that? Oh, um. Uh, I mean, I play violent video games. I've played them since I was a kid, and I have no desire to kill people. So my opinion is that there is more to it than just video games, and I think it's a factor. There's many factors that play into it, and not just video games. And I don't think we can just blanketly state that video games are the cause, and that's that. Um, I mean, I, I played Grand Theft Auto at like 13. Or ten or eleven. I was probably with you. Yeah, I, exactly. And like, my mom knew I was buying these games because she had to approve of it. But she was fine with it because she knew it was fine. Like in the end, it's just like it's not anything bad. I watched violent movies as a kid. So then that's exactly the point. Like imagine like, a world where we didn't have video games. We would be blaming movies and right. TV shows. And I get that yeah. gets us more, maybe more desensitized to these things. But it's like okay, just because I watch. Uh, 
you know, the Terminator or something or, yeah. you know, good, good fellas, you know, that the violent yeah. mob movie, it's yeah. not going to incentivize me to be like, well, I'm joining the mob now. I'm going to go do like it. I, I think it's, it's a huge leap. I think there is a, a valid point to that comment. That being said, I don't think it is the end all and be all. I think there's a lot of factors that play into it. Uh, and I think maybe, sure, maybe video games can be less gruesome. Fine. Like, I don't, it's not a big deal to me if they are, but I don't think that is the end all and be all reason. I don't think if Congress was to go, all right, all violent video games are now going to be less violent and you have to be, you know, 21 to buy the game. It's not going to stop people from getting it. And if people are going to want to do these horrible things, they're still going to do it. And I think there's, there's more, I think it's, in my opinion, I think it's more about gun control and about yeah. background checks that's really it is yes the whole thing that like uh the 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 gun doesn't shoot the person the person pulls the trigger whatever the hell that yeah i mean and that's and that's thing. still even a good argument but i mean my thing if if it is Just, the video uh, games yeah. you know the u.s of course consumes a lot of video games but we are not the only consumers of video games video games yeah they're, exactly they're all over the world and yeah. uh, one stat that i saw it's like japan per capita yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. uses much more video games than america yeah. What about their mass shootings? They have a significantly, significantly less mass shootings than the United States. So yeah. I just think it's just I it th that argument drives me crazy. Um, it drives of course, me crazy too. You know, and it's just like, dude, it's it's these these video game companies are all over the world, and it's yep. like if if it, we saw these shootings all over the world, then fine, maybe I'd buy into that. But yep. like, it's it just. I don't know. It's dancing around the real root cause and the, yep. um, you know, and, and listeners, if you, if you want to hear more about that topic, me and Diane talked about that ad nauseum kind of thing for like an hour, kind of how various, various arguments of where people want to blame uh, mental illness kind of thing. Yeah. And I feel really bad now because mental illness is bad in the sense of like now mental illness is the new scapegoat for mass shootings. I don't know and if it's new. One, all right, sure, fair. Let me rephrase that. It's the new talking point of our president and of of the – that's kind of the new thing that everyone's going to hitch on to right now. And my fear is that, yes, it definitely plays a role, of course. There's a lot of factors. But we're going to focus so much on this one thing and not look at the, the larger picture. And what's that going to do? It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt people who – may need to see someone and, and be seen, but now they're going to possibly be afraid that they're going to be thought of as violent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm totally making, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking out loud and I don't know if it's actually true, but that's how I'm thinking. Like this may make people feel, and that's not cool. Cause they're probably not. They probably just need to talk to someone. And, yeah. uh, well, there is that, that stigma. And, you know, I, I of course have a little bit different perspective in a sense because I've been living with this, you know, really right. for years. And I vividly remember Sandy Hook, right? Yep. You know, that shooting at the elementary oh, school yeah. that was so close to where we grew up in Connecticut. You know, yep. it's just the same shit, dude, different year. And, yep. you know, okay, it's this is the talking president of Donald Trump, but it was the exact same thing in 2012. Oh, yep. should we do gun control? Should we do mental health reform? Blah, 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 blah. It's just the same thing over and over and over. And it drives me crazy. I'll never yep. forget one of the most stigmatizing things a person has ever said to me. I came out to a coworker. I was like, hey, you know, like I live with bipolar disorder. And she said, oh, I'm very surprised you're bipolar. You don't seem violent at all. Oh. And I was just, How yeah. How feel? Well, that and it, it, it like <laughs> I was just so speechless and dumbfounded and just sad because yeah. I was, of course, in the moment, I was very heated and I kind of just politely said fuck you and walked away. And I didn't actually say fuck you in my head, though. How, do, how does one say politely fuck you with my loud? face with a blank stare of you're an idiot? Kind of <laughs> um, okay and and walked away and you know i literally yeah. essentially stopped talking to that person ever again um but on the other side of the coin you know her it, it, i, I don't want to sit here and say that n no mental illness ever leads to violence there there right. of course are cases yep. and you know a bad apple can paint a poor picture for everybody kind of thing and mm -hmm. that woman and this kind of took me years to kind of forgive this woman in my own head 
maybe that woman in her life did have someone who had bipolar disorder, who had a very bad temper and who was violent, you know? So I don't blame that person, but it, of course it it was very hurtful in the heat of the moment. Of course it is. That's not, I would be hurt too. If someone said something like that to me, Mm -hmm. not something that I was going through. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. But I'm happy you, you, you accepted it. It's a big deal. And, uh, we're able to kind of, I don't want to say move on, but understand it from her point of view. Yeah. But it's, yeah. I mean, so actually I am really looking forward to the podcast about the gun violence and, and all that. I saw that post on my podcast app of choice and, uh, I was like, oh, I want to listen to this. So I have to finish. I'm like going to like thinking about like everything you've gone through in your life and then thinking about you going to school. I'm very fascinated by all the stories you've touched on in your season one and now season two of the podcast. So it's just, it's really fascinating to kind of see your transformation, but also how people view not you personally, but the things that you're trying to discuss from their perspective. I just, I think it's really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, It's cool. It's really cool. Well, thank you. And how about let's, we got about five minutes here. I think we should both leave on words of advice on how to use technology in a mentally healthy, mentally conscious way. And what, what techniques have you learned? What techniques would you advise? And, you know, of course, me and you aren't perfect. We, there's going to be times where I spend way too much time on my phone and of course, video games and you likewise, but what, what words of advice do you want to try to live by better? And for the listeners as well. Sure. So uh, for me, I do a couple things and I've been this, the past couple of years, I've been very conscious of it because I, I, when I walk down the street and I see people on their phones or I'm taking the tea into work or whatever, and just constantly see people looking at their screens. I'm always thinking to myself, like you should step back and just be present. So what do I do? Number one, as I mentioned earlier, I have settings on my phone where it tells me if I'm using my apps for more than 30 minutes. Um, so I recommend everyone looking into doing that and finding a tutorial, tutorial online how to do it. It's pretty simple. That's one thing. The second thing, um, meditation. Meditation is a wonderful practice. Uh, I've talked about this in the podcast that then got deleted from you and I. Yeah, uh, sorry about I, that. <laughs> I, I use Headspace, and uh, there's many apps like there. Like there's Calm, there's Headspace. There's a you just set a timer, I believe, and you just use a timer on mm-hmm. your phone, and just sitting there in silence and just hearing your thoughts. It's boring sometimes, but it's nice. That's helpful. And then uh, the simplest one of them all is when you're reaching for your phone, put your phone down and grab a book. Yeah. And read for five minutes, 10 minutes. And that's it. And so those are the kind of things that I do. And I try to be conscious as as much as I can be uh, when doing it. How about yourself? So, I mean, I guess a couple things that I would think about is, you know, I think everybody right now at some point, maybe once a year or so, take a month or two off social media. Mm. I just, like that. Yeah. Just see what see what it feels like. Come back. I'm not saying forever, but I do we think do a hashtag like yeah yeah take, take a break Boom. yeah take a break yeah take, take a break from social media. Take a little yeah. take a month off. I think it's healthy yeah. for everybody. You know that the time that I did it during that boards period was really the first time in my life that I did it hardcore. Where I was like, okay, yeah. everything's everything's just deactivated whatever yeah. and it, it led me to study more um let me yeah. be just a little bit more focused present in the moment mm-hmm. and and like you said i it just i of course did miss it and i'm I'm back on now but in the yep. future again i am planning on taking hiatuses so that's yep. that's would be one of my tips one I'm of my totally other tips great. um and it it's gonna sound kind of weird but we talked about it i really found that my apple watch which is of course a technology means has led to me actually using technology less, less. Yep. even though i'm wearing it at all times i look at my phone at uh or look at my watch excuse me for the time mm-hmm. i can quickly i find myself just really using the fitness stuff counting my calories and a timer and those are literally and of course you can do that with a basic phone too but it's just kind of nice, you know, when I'm playing a golf game or I can even track yep. my mileage when I'm on the bicycle. It's a mm-hmm. fun technology thing. And I have realized it's led to me looking at my cell phone less. Yep. Um, and so, you know, if you think that using your cell phone less is going to be very, very challenging for you, I do think making an investment in some sort of smart 
watch potentially could lead to beneficial outcomes. So that Agreed. would be one of my tips. And then Agreed. I guess my last tip, um, if you are, um, for instance, when I go out with my wife, mm -hmm. I now try to get in the habit. She yep. always has her cell phone on her, right? Whatever. Okay. I, I love I her wanna, to death. Love I'm going to tag out on this. Yeah. I'm yeah tag love her to no. death. She always has her cell phone on. Yep. I leave my cell phone at home. Yep. And okay. I think also if you're going out with your friends, this is, could be yep. a good technique. You know, there is, of course, yep. safety issues. If you're going out drinking and something like that, maybe it's not a good idea. If you're going out to a big concert or something, maybe not a good idea. But, you know, in certain situations where you – it's, of course, not a safety issue, I think it is healthy. Leave the phone at home. You'll be fine. If, if you do need to make a call or something, you can use somebody else's phone. It's not that big of a deal. So along those lines, I, I, I agree with – the not using your phone. I don't know about if I agree with leaving your phone at home. What I'd recommend, and I've done this with my friends here when we have dinner, we'll all put our phones on the table face down and then we can't touch them. And that's the thing. So therefore, like we have them on us, but they're like flipped over on the table in front of us and none of us can touch our phones and we all just have to be together. Yeah. That is also a really great way to do that. And I, and for it, for the example that you were just giving with your wife and how you, when you go out to dinner, like Barthi and I, we, we make an effort that we don't go on our phones during our dinner time um, because we don't want to be on our phones. Um, yeah. So I, I think those are really helpful tips for anyone to follow. And even doing it once a week or once a month, just starting that process, you'll start to slowly use your digital devices less in a good way, in a healthy yeah. way. Yeah, I think it's almost analogous to starting a diet, maybe even starting to 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 lessen your consumption of alcohol or something like that. Going yep. cold turkey is, of course, going to be challenging. Yeah. Um, but I think incremental changes in the right direction is the a good way to start. And and Agreed. you know you'll start to notice things um, in your life. Maybe uh, you have less you don't compare yourself to other people as much because you're mm -hmm. not spending as much time on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Or maybe as simple as, you know, this morning when I was walking my dog, I was just hearing the wind blow in the leaves. And yeah. typically so when I'm I... out on a walk, I'm listening to podcasts. You know, I'm a big, I, I consume quite a bit of podcasts. So whenever I go on a walk or a run these days, I have my headphones yep. on. Yep. But this morning it was just, it almost felt weird the first 10 minutes. But the I went on like 45 hour minute walk and towards the end, it was just really kind of soothing to just hear yeah. the noises of the the cars, hear the noises yep. of the wind. Of the, it was it was really really nice and meditative. Yeah, I like that. Uh, please send me a picture of your dog. I will, and uh, I think that's about an hour. Let's get you out of here, Mark. You got you got a good Saturday lined up for you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go see the Lion King. <laughs> nice, <laughs> yeah. nice. And then uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going auto crossing tomorrow. Oh, in what kind of car? Uh, Miata. Nice. Standard. Who's yeah. Miata? Uh, my friend Kevin's. Nice, dude. Yeah. That's fun. I, that's you know that's oh. something I wanted to get into. We'll have to have another podcast discussion about that. But, I will totally talk about that. Um, I have a lot of fun. Be safe. Thank you. Um, have you know, today. It's not all about acceleration. Braking is the way to get a fast fast time. Yep. Uh, have a good time golfing. Yeah. Thanks, may, brother. Me get a hole in one. I just, my goal, you know, right now I'm shooting about a 94, so I'm trying oh, to wow. break into the 80s. So yeah, I'm I playing. Do it. I mean, my thing, you know me, you know me well, Mark. I'm kind of, I feel like a, what's the word, browser? Like, who's that Mario character? Kind Bowser. of like big, clumsy, yeah. strong yeah, yeah, in yeah, a sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that really doesn't help me out with golf. So I have to <laughs> almost think of whenever I take my golf swing, like, I used to say, okay, let's swing 80%. Now in yeah. my head, I'm like, okay, swing 20%. Just, just barely take it back and cut through and yep. you know i don't hit it as far but i'm hitting it a lot straighter just much more yep. relaxed and so that's yeah. that's really what i'm going to focus on today thank you so much for tuning into this episode be sure to tune in and next wednesday i got a couple great episodes already recorded that i'm excited to release for you i talked with one of my great friends who um she's a black uh, woman and she's she's going to be talking about how her race and ethnicity impacts her mental health challenges that she's dealt with i'm also starting a series with my great friend richard arreo the same one who i wrote that book with about how we have been seeing mental health in various 
capacities in different rotations that we're in during our third year of medical school. So this is going to be a recurring episode series. I'm really excited to share it with you. And once again, if you are a listener of this episode, I would love to connect with you. Once again, I think the easiest way to do this is via Instagram. This is the social media platform that I use the most. You can follow me at Logan Noon. That's uh, at Logan Noon, N-O-O-N-E. Um, so be sure to follow me there. I try to post, um, obviously, like we talked about in this episode, not a ton, but a healthy amount. So also, if you would ever like to come on the show, uh, you could speak with me anonymously. One thing I am going to try to do is if you have a mental health challenge that you kind of just want to bounce some ideas off me, but get, get my advice on what I think. You can do this anonymously, and I would love to really do this as a podcast episode. I think it would be really valuable for people to listen to. Also, if you uh, have anyone that you think would be a very interesting guest for me to speak with, uh, please reach out to me. Um, you could comment in one of my Instagram photos or send me a direct message on any social media platform. Email me at logan at loganoon.com um, because I'm always looking for more guests, more interesting people, really from all walks of life, uh, to discuss anything concerning mental health. And once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, it's been so great to restart this podcast season two. I look forward to doing it every week, and you guys really make it fulfilling and so gratifying for me. So thanks again. <laughs>